everybody. I'm Kelly Hogan, and I'm joined today by my friend, fellow carnivore, Audra Coleman. What's up, Audra? Hey, Miss Kelly. How are you today? Good. So, y'all, yeah, I've hung out with Audra. I'm going to point back here. I've got a photo from Las Vegas. Uh, Audra and I hung out in Las Vegas. We've been in to Dr. Lisa Wiedemann's meetups a couple of times in New Jersey. We went to Rebecca Heishman's Tennessee retreat. We were both there. And you've even come to my house. Audra, I love you. I'm so glad you came on the channel to talk to me today. I love you too. You're such an inspiration to the carnivore community. And you just, you give me inspiration to keep going. Thank you, friend. I appreciate that. So two main topics I want to talk about today. The first one is this. I get some clients or even DMs occasionally that will say, Kelly, you don't understand how hard this is because maybe you were never really a sugar addict. You don't understand the grip that it has on me. I just, I don't understand how did you break free if you were really that addicted? So first of all, my hands literally shook for about two weeks when I first cut out sugar and carbs. There is a reason that I got over 260 pounds and it wasn't because I didn't like sugar. So I think I think I qualify as a former sugar addict, but if anyone doubts, I have heard you speak on this before. Tell us a little bit about where your history began and why you would certainly say, if there's hope for you, there's hope for anybody. I had the biggest sugar addiction ever. I literally grew up as a child. We had cookies. You know, we had we had all kinds of sweets and we were rewarded with candy and anything else. Good grades. You know, you were you were good behavior, your birthday, Christmas, holidays. It all revolved around food and sugar. And for me, I didn't really care about a meal. For me, a meal didn't interest me. Let's just get to the dessert. I just had to eliminate the sugar. There, there's no way around it. When you eliminate the sugar, the cravings go away. If somebody would have told me two and a half years ago, I would be where I'm at today and I would not be sugar addicted, I would have said no way. There's no way, but there is. I'm here now. I don't have sugar cravings. I don't have the sugar addiction. However, I do not indulge in any sugar because I'm afraid if I do, that will bring the lizard brain back and I will be sugar addicted again. Um, but I, I don't miss it. I don't miss it. I see it. And I think to myself, Oh, that used to have so much control over me. And now I have food freedom. I always say that my addiction before was like somebody pounding on the door. Just bang, 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 bang. You have to answer the door. You have to answer that addiction. Now, occasionally I'll hear a little tap, tap, but I don't have to answer the door. I know it's there and I don't have to answer it. And therefore, that's what keeps me away from the sugar, you know, the lizard brain or the, the ditch demon abstinence just yes abstinence oh i am not a moderator i have to be an abstainer i i'm 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 all in or all out i cannot i'm one of those people i can't just have one oreo i gotta have the whole row so therefore for me it's best if i have none um i i can't i can't moderate it and i know i can't moderate it i used to look so forward to baby showers you know uh birthday parties events like that because they would always have cake with icing and you know i was that person that said put all the extra icing on my plate and i would eat it and i would feel like i was in a coma you know i, I would actually feel nauseous i would wait for the nausea to go away and then i would eat some more Right. I mean, you know, it, it was, it's, it's just so, it is an addiction. I only thought drug, alcohol, cigarettes, I thought that was addiction. I did not realize a person could be so sugar addicted until I started doing research and finding out about it, found your channel, found out about the carnivore world. You know, hey, you can become not sugar addicted anymore. So Audra, I've heard some people say that the, the, the fix, I guess, the fix for this could be weight loss surgery, gastric bypass, and all of that. What are your thoughts? Well, I went down that road. Let me just say that I've done every every diet and on demand, including weight loss surgery. Um, I had the sleeve, so I do not have a bypass. I went down that road. Um, I had a very bad surgery. I actually had two leaks, um, very involved in the hospital, eight weeks, 
it was a complete nightmare for the most part. Um, but after I had the surgery, I did lose some weight, but eventually guess what happened? I found my way back to the addiction again. I went back to the sugar because I could eat a little bit of it and my weight wasn't really going up. And then the more I ate of it, the more I wanted, the more I wanted, the more I ate. Here we go again with the vicious sugar cycle. So I ended up being sugar addicted again. I lost a good bit of weight, had an eye problem happen, had a bunch of steroids, started eating sugar again. And next thing you know, the the lizard brain had me by the throat and here I am hooked again on sugar. The weight went back up. Um, so basically weight loss surgery is, it doesn't fix your cravings. If you go back to the old ways, you're going to gain the weight back. And there again, the more sugar you eat, the more sugar you crave. Yes. And most people who have the surgery end up back where they started. It doesn't fix that relationship. And also, don't you hate it when people say relationship with food? Because we're not even talking about food. You can't have a healthy relationship with an unhealthy person or thing, right? So to say that I have a healthy relationship with Oreos, I couldn't because it was addictive and it's garbage. So I can't have a healthy relationship. I had to cut it off. The end. Abstain. Peace out, right? That. That exactly. I could see a commercial on TV and that would trigger me to want to go get whatever candy bar, Reese's, whatever the commercial was. And, and I would just go get it yep. and eat it and then want more. So for any of you, if anyone is watching right now and you feel like they don't understand, we do, we do, we get it. Hooked, feels hopeless. Have you had done everything, including surgery and all of the diets? I assume there were some also pills and potions in there. Where did where did carnivore come into this? At what how long ago? Okay, so carnivore. I started searching on YouTube. I was just 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 basically surfing YouTube and I came across this girl called Kelly Hogan. <laughs> and she at the time she said, I've been eating carnivore for 12 years. I only eat meat. And I went, what? What is she talking about? So I started listening, started doing a little research, ran across Dr. Barry, um, started listening. And, and I listened for a while. You know, I, I listened for a while. And in January of 21, I thought, you know what? I think I can do this. So I started trying to do it. And I was I would do good during the week. And then I wouldn't be good on the weekends. You know, I would there again. There's that. You know, I needed to be an abstainer. But I was still moderating. You know, I was doing good during the week, falling off on the weekends. Couldn't figure out why on Mondays it was so hard to get back on the wagon. So I started like binge watching your videos, binge watching Dr. Barry, trying to get my head around how is, you know, doing research. Is this healthy? What can I do? How can I make my life better? How can I get away from sugar? How can I quit yo-yo dieting? How can I stop craving sugar? And that's when carnivore came into my life. And at that point, I had gone back up quite a bit of weight, not as much as I as before weight loss surgery, but I was back up to like 250. Um, and so I found it. I started doing it in January of 21. Um, I fell off the wagon a lot. I watched a lot of videos. You know, I try so hard and then the, the lizard brain would get me on the weekends. Well, September the 1st of 21, I decided this is it. This is it. No more. I have got to do better on the weekends. And slowly during that time, I was getting better each weekend, each weekend. And then after that, I got on the wagon and I've been on the wagon ever since. So I'm about two and a half years in. And I'll be honest with you, carnivore is the best thing I've ever done. This is something that is sustainable for me. Used to, I would get off of the sugar for a while. I'd lose 20 or 30 pounds and then go back to the old way I used to eat. And that was the problem. With carnivore, I don't go back to the old way I used to eat because that's not how I eat. This is how I eat now. This is what has kept me this this is sustainable for me for life. No sugar, no cravings, no carbs. I'm way better. Um, and the mental clarity is worth its weight in gold. Mental clarity 
It really matters. We do not need trouble with word recall. We don't have time for that, right? No right. time for that. Um, weight wise, since starting carnivore, how has that been for you? The first 10 months I got, I dropped about 75 pounds. Wow. Um, and in the other time, you know, messing with different higher fat, lower protein, you know, just playing with the carnivore diet. Some, I do some intermittent fasting here and there. Um, I'm down 85 pounds. Wow. So, um, yeah. That so. is awesome. Absolutely amazing. No surgery required, no needles required, pills, potions, expensive things, just delicious meat. Not only did I lose 85 pounds, I went from size 18s to like eights and tens. So, I mean, that is just, you know, it, 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 you just feel amazing. You just feel so much better. And my health is so great. You know, I feel, I feel better than I've ever felt. Oh, Audra, that's so cool. Do you mind me asking your age? 56. You look good, dropping jean sizes, and you just feel good. And I can tell y'all from hanging out with her in person, she is a, just a joy to be around. So I am so pumped about your story. Okay, now I wanted to pause here to talk a little bit about a test that some people may or may not be familiar with. It is the CAC test, the Coronary Artery Calcium Test. If y'all are wondering if this seems really random right now, don't worry. I'm going to bring it home, y'all, okay? So just hang with me. Um, it is a CT scan that is a very quick test. It only takes five to ten minutes. I've had it done. They put a few little stickers on your chest. It's painless. In fact, for people who are really claustrophobic, you don't have to worry about being in a tight tube for long. A lot of times your head is kept out, and it's over in just a few minutes. Typical cost out of pocket, for me, it was about $120 um, across the country. $100 to $250 is pretty normal. You can even get a Groupon to get a CAC scan. I've had people ask, well, what does it mean? CAC is the, it measures the calcium. What it does not measure is the amount of plaque in the arteries. So when our arteries are getting clogged up, it starts off as this sticky plaque and then the longer the sticky plaque is there it hardens and calcifies calcifies into this calcium and that's what the x-ray will actually pick up on is these bright white specks flecks of calcium and the goal is you want a zero right no flex at all you don't want to see any of that bright white calcium in our arteries so while it won't show how much plaque there is the next step after plaque is calcium. And if you've got calcium buildup, rest assured, you've got plaque buildup. Statistically, this test is a much better predictor of future heart incidences than having high LDL or having high cholesterol. It's a pretty reliable test. If a person has a zero, regardless of how high the cholesterol is, even the American Heart Association has now said, you do not need to be on a statin if you have a score of a zero. As far as how a person progresses, so once you get your very first CAC scan, and let's say your score is a 100, it's not a zero, there's some plaque build up, you get 100. Typically, a person will then increase on that baseline at a rate of about 20% per year, and that is considered normal textbook normal, not even like, wow, you're doing something wrong. So if you start off at 100, then in one year, you would expect to see about a 120 normal progression. And your doctor will say, okay, well, that's normal for age progression. Nothing to freak out about, except, you know, in five years, now you're at a 200. Mm, not great, Bob, right? Once a person gets over a score of 300, you are considered high risk. Also worth noting, if a person goes to Google right now, in fact, you could pause the video if you want or check afterwards. And you search for, can someone lower their CAC score? The very first thing that pops up, at least on my Google, you can let me know in the comments what yours says, is highlighted. Once measured, your calcium score does not decrease. There are some very controlled and impressive studies out there, like double-blind, placebo-type studies, showing that statins have no effect on lowering a CAC score. It will lower your cholesterol and LDL but not your CAC scan. 
All right, Audra, I brought us up, up to speed. The background on a CAC scan. <laughs> Tell folks when and why you first had a CAC test. Okay, so my dad had open heart surgery twice in his life, once in his late 40s and then again in his 70s. So back in 2014, another family member of mine was diagnosed with having a artery 99% blocked and needed a stent. So that kind of scared me at the time. I thought, well, you know what? Here I am, 46 years old. You know, I've just had weight loss surgery. Okay. At this time, I was a year and nine months into my weight loss surgery. Okay. I had lost weight. You know, my BMI had come down whole nine yards. So I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I should get a CAC score as a, a baseline, you know, a baseline to know where I'm at, what's going on, how this is. Hey, you know, why not have it done? So I went to my doctor and said, hey, let's do a CAC score because of my family history. So, of course, they said no problem. So I did a CAC score. And at the time, it came back at 265. At age, how old are you? 40, 46. And I was a year and nine months into my weight loss surgery then. So there's no telling what it was prior to that. Right. You know, that was the first one I'd ever had at age 46. So you would think that if just losing weight lowers a CAC score, yours should have been pretty good at that point. But according to everything I've looked at, losing weight does not lower a CAC score and your experience would back that up because 265 in your 40s is no bueno right like this is not good news predictability you are almost to the high risk before you had even gotten to your 50s um was your doctor concerned at that point um, they were concerned and said, hey, you know, we just kind of need to keep an eye on this for future reference. You know, you might need you might need to go on a statin, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, we'll kind of see how things go. Um, you know, at the time I just said, hey, I don't really think I want to start taking a statin. I've never taken a statin and I didn't then either. But um, yeah, that's kind of what they said. And I kind of put it to rest. OK, it wasn't like some off the wall number like you know, seven, eight, nine hundred, but it still was concerning. It certainly was way far from a zero. Uh, yes. So based on the things I've looked at online, conventional, conventional advice is you can't lower it. All you're hoping to do is to not progress quicker than average 20% of your baseline per year. And to, you know, just don't escalate too quickly. That's the goal. When I search for how can you slow down CAC increasing? How can you slow down the progression? You can, you would bet on exactly what the, the conventional advice is. Cut out red meat, avoid fat, plant-based. And I could pull up website after website. And again, anybody can use Google. Just search. How are you going to fix this problem? Audra, I assume that 10 years ago, you probably weren't plant-based or carnivore at the time of those results. Just kind of doing your, you had the weight loss surgery. So you're naturally eating a little less. But then at some point, the sugar addiction came back full force. You regained the weight. You were back almost to where you were to start with. Is that pretty accurate? Close to where you Yeah, close, okay. yeah. And now here we are 10 years later, two and a half years of this carnivore, and you decided to go for your next CAC scan. Was that just recently? It was. It actually was. Um, it was last week, matter of fact. I wish I had one in between the 10-year span just as just just to see how high it probably was right. but i don't so i just had one done last week and that score are we ready it was a 16. 160? 16. 60? 16. 16. Oh, six. Oh, Drew, that is phenomenal now i have heard of some other people in the carnivore space saying Carnivore reduced my CAC scans, but it wasn't somebody that I felt close or comfortable enough to say, 
can I see? Is it officially documented? Was this truly before carnivore or after carnivore? And I thought your story is so powerful because that 265 that you had before was after you had already lost weight. And it was still high. We don't know if at some point, either before or after that, it may have even gotten way higher to now be reduced to a 16, which for your age group now in 50s is fantastic. Fantastic. And I know you said you were a little disappointed because you wanted that carnivore zero. Well, I can't wait to see what it is in another year. Yes, definitely. I'm planning to do it again in a year's time, just simply because why not? I mean, it's it's a simple test. Like you said, they put four stickies on you. It takes five minutes. You're in the, like a little machine. Um, just the, the, the cat scan rolling around. No big deal. Um, I mean, it, it takes five minutes. So why not know? Why not know what it is? I am pumped. I want to have a zero party. When you hit it, so we can celebrate together. We'll have to just throw down and eat some steak. You're doing the exact opposite of what the entire internet says we're supposed to do to fix this score. Also, they say you can't fix it. I, I Googled the same thing you're talking about. I After I got the score, I Googled it and I'm like, you know, and, and everything I read said the same thing. There, yeah. There's nothing, there's no medication to lower your CAC score. There's nothing that you can do diet wise or physical wise to lower it. That's not true. That's not true. Um, you know, I think the carnivore lifestyle lowers your CAC score. You are living proof of it. Absolutely. That's right. Proof of that. They do say that surgically they can go in and remove calcium. So if anyone wants to go that route, but the fact that they're preaching plant-based and the only way you could keep it from going higher quicker is to avoid the exact foods that you are living on day in and day out is just one of the most in-your-face moments of they've got it wrong. They've got it wrong. And I hope to heavens there are very few people watching this video who are going to be surprised by the fact that seriously they've just got it wrong so when people ask you hey audra how's your cholesterol how how is your cholesterol because mine's pretty high at the moment my total cholesterol so i just recently had a physical had blood work done and everything and uh, my provider said to me look your blood work is like amazing your blood work is great um my cholesterol is like uh 230 my own cholesterol story when people ask, I'm like, I don't know on which day because I've been eating pretty much nothing but meat. Well, literally nothing but meat for 14 years and for the five years prior, pretty much nothing but meat. And there have been times in there where my cholesterol, total cholesterol was so low, it would not register on the test. It would say below 150. Wow. And there are times like right now where it's 315. Well, I say right now, I didn't have it tested today, but the last time I had it checked, which was just um, maybe a month ago, 315, all while eating meat. My LDL, same thing, sometimes so high, sometimes so low. Those things, like the wind, it just depends on the day. What doesn't change is my HDL stays high. My triglycerides stay low. That doesn't change with the wind. And I can guarantee you, a CAC score doesn't either. And to me, those are far more important than total cholesterol and LDL. I agree. Cheers to um, us for not having to be like scared into taking medication to change something that fluctuates wildly eating the same exact diet. Exactly. I've actually gone and donated blood before. And as a kind of a promotion to get you in we'll give you your cholesterol score for free you know and if i fast a little bit before i go i notice that my cholesterol is way lower so it, you're right it does change which way is the wind blowing today as to what the cholesterol score is yeah dave feldman has done some amazing tests where he will actually like binge eat including massive amounts of butter right wow. before a test and he can get his cholesterol to drop crazy low if he does that versus certain amounts of fasting and he's just toyed around with in a one week span 
he can make it look like he's about to, according to conventional doctors, die of a heart attack at any moment. Or wow, good job. What are you a vegan? You must have such you have such low cholesterol. He's like, it how can this number actually indicate anything if it changes that much in a week? But your CAC score doesn't. No, it doesn't. Wow. But anyway, and Audra. That's from eating fat. He does that, right? From oh, eating butter, basically. Yes. Wow. Yes. He wow. can use and a carnivore diet and can swing the results of a cholesterol test like crazy. He does it all the time. Wow. And I can remember a time when I was low fat. Yes. You know, I mean, terrible, terrible way to be, you know? I mean, fat is so good for you, but I didn't know that till I became a carnivore. Right. The fact that I was trying to heal hormones and trying to, you know, get a regular cycle and fix my skin all back when I was eating a low fat diet that couldn't even support my hormones. It's just, it's sad. And a lot of people are still out there living this way. So when I think about you and I and where we came from, and I, I can picture people watching who are still in the throes of addiction and obesity and getting this horrible advice and being told, you know, you're going to have a heart attack because of high cholesterol numbers. So we need to cut out the fat. Your story needs to be told, Audra. It, it's not the fat. It's the sugar. <laughs> and abstinence is the way to get clean for anything, right? People who think yeah. abstinence isn't the answer. What if it was um, somebody addicted to cigarettes? You're going to tell them just keep having small amounts of cigarettes forever? It's never going to work. Alcohol, a severe alcoholic. Moderation isn't going to fix this. It's not your relationship that's broken. It's the food is toxic, addictive junk. And I'm so proud of you for cutting it out and for sharing your story. And not only have you done it, now you're helping other people do this to come through it, right? Yes, definitely. Um, I, you know, you, you want to just get on the rooftops and shout it to people because you feel so amazing. Yeah. And, and it's this freedom. Um, I used to say to people, like all areas of my life were great. I had a great career, great family, great marriage. And everything was great for years. And I would say, but you know what? I just can't get my weight or my diet under control. Why can I not do that? Why do I feel like that's the one little part of my life I can't fix? And guess what? I fixed that now. Carnivore fixed that for me. Awesome. So tell people you work with groups, individual coaching. What do you do now with, to help shout it from the rooftops? Um, I do individual coaching as well as group coaching. Um, so yes, I do a Zoom class on Tuesday nights from eight to nine. Awesome. I, of course, I will link to that and to your YouTube channel. And I'm just honored to know you. It's been a joy. Um, I've been seeing your beautiful face on Zoom every Wednesday night. And I looked it up. That's been almost almost two and a half years. It's been over mm -hmm. two years now. And you share wisdom in the groups and you are a bright light in my life and a dear friend. So thank you for coming here. And I hope people really listen and open their minds. This is outside of the box and we are okay with that, right? That's right. If you're, if you're listening, find, find your tribe, find your community, you know, find where you are at, find, find where you're involved with other people who are like-minded community is where it's at if you're struggling find somebody else to talk to who's in who's in the same mind that you are the same likewise community you know you you get in there and you talk to people and you find out you're not the only person who struggled with this or that so in the carnivore world community is is so important it's so important to help you get through the tough times yeah, well said, friend. Thank you, Audra. And I will be seeing Thank you, you uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. Yes, you will. Great. Thank All you right. for having me. Welcome.